Today on New Season. God's about to restore your family, your relationships, your joy, your peace, your integrity, your health, your destiny, your finances, your calling, like the damage never happened. And now, here is today's word with Pastor Sam Rodriguez. First Kings 19, we read it. And we'll reference that again. 1919, Elijah was plowing with the 12th team when Elijah went over to him and threw his mantle across his shoulders and then walked away. The mantle, and we're going to expedite the process here a bit, but the mantle was the physical and symbolic representation of God's assignment, anointing, and authority. Through the vicarious atoning work of Jesus Christ, our mantle is not a physical piece of cloth. Our mantle is the convergence of God's purpose, passion, and promise. As we thrive in his presence, we have a mantle. Now that mantle was not just a piece of cloth. The mantle had a testimony. Come up here, Pastor DJ, real quick. You're my Elisha. And let me put this on you somehow. Yeah. It looks like what Luke Skywalker was wearing in the last scene of the movie. <laughs> the last scene right like right when they found him and he was like oh he looked really old by the way i mean he really aged didn't age well either he really aged and then they you saw that that's like the garb but come here come here that's the mantle and the mantle had a testimony because if you're taking any notes this is the mantle that survived the drought the fire and then received the rain this is the mantle of drought fire and rain repeat after me say drought fire and rain in 1 Kings chapter 18, this is what we're going to do with the mantle. Now that yesterday you, you were pushing the plow and now this is, this is the mantle. What we're going to do with the mantle. This mantle represents surviving the drought, going through the fire, and thriving in the rain. Because in 1 Kings chapter 18, Elijah had this mantle. When he ushered in, he prayed in a drought. And then he, they went through the fire. Do you know the story of Mount Carmel? And then came down the abundant rain. And by the way, that's the chronological biblical order. It's drought, it's fire, and it's rain. This is critical to understand. We, as, as believers, and, and if you're, even if you're not a believer, you will be in the next 32 minutes. We, we, we all go through droughts and fires and rains, metaphorically, spiritually, emotionally, financially. We all go through. And... And matter of fact, let me ask, if you've been through a serious relational, financial, ministerial, whatever it may be, if you've been through some type of drought where nothing was growing in your life and the ground was hard, if you've been through a relational drought, a financial drought, a spiritual drought, raise one hand. If you've been through so many, you've lost count, raise both hands. If you've been through so many, you don't even want to even go through a drought again and, you're, and raise both hands and a foot. If you're growing through therapy because of the number of droughts. So we all go through droughts. But by the way, the pecking order is drought, fire, and rain. The process means something. Because you can't, a lot of people want to jump from drought to rain without going through the fire. And the fire is right in the middle. We have to go through the fire. The fire is that, that uncomfortable stage in life where things are purged off and things are removed and things are consumed and there is a slimming down process. There is a spiritual process. The theological term would be sanctification, but it's a process indeed. But it, it is a process where God removes things from our lives. Attitudes and constructs and language and vocabulary and habits. And even to a degree, it could be even relationships that could be counterproductive and abusive and detrimental to the fulfillment of God's given destiny for each and every one of us. So if you've been, if you've been through the drought already, and if you've been through the fire, if you've been through a, a stage in your life or maybe you're going through the fire now where things are being removed from you and things are being purged from you and it's uncomfortable. But if you've been through the drought already and if you've been through the fire, I have great news for you this afternoon. Put a smile on your face and a dance on your feet because if you've been through the drought and if you've been through the fire, the next thing coming your way, your family's way, is nothing less than abundant rain. If you believe that,
Ezekiel 34, 26. And in the proper season, I will send the showers they need. They will be showers of blessing. If you believe that this is your season of abundant rain, raise one hand. If you're ready for rain like you've never seen it before, raise both hands. This is your season. Oh, by the way, biblically speaking, as we go through things, because we have to go through to get to, the mantle embodied the notion that you can go through things and not just survive, but end up thriving at the end of the day. But the power of that mantle also speaks accolades. When we go through things in life, saints, when you carry the mantle, God's purpose, passion, and promise through the vicarious atoning work of Jesus Christ, when you carry the mantle, this is going to be a little bit counterintuitive to some, but here it goes. You do not necessarily have to initially see God in what you're going through. Now, that sounds a little bit discomforting for some. There is, there is no biblical sort of impetus that conveys the message that there is an obligation for you and I to initially see God when we're going through difficult moments. You may say, Pastor Sam, that's like, what? that's just... That's just weird well no it's it's bible it's daniel chapter 3 when shadrach meshach and abednego went through the fiery furnace there is nothing do your biblical or, or google or wikipedia due diligence please there is nothing in scripture that says and the hebrew boys they saw the fourth man in the fiery furnace and in the middle of the fiery furnace they took out a flat white and drank together coffee and they there's nothing that says the Hebrew boys saw the fourth man. Read it. There's nothing that they saw the fourth man. Does anyone know who saw the fourth man? The king, the bad guy, the one that put him in there. In other words, it doesn't matter right now what you're going through. If you're seeing God in the midst of what you're going through, what matters is that hell sees God in the midst of what you're going through. What matters is that everything that put you in there sees God. Because whether you see him or not, God is right there. It's the mantle. It is that mantle. It is the mantle that, that really brings about the reality that God is attracted to impossible circumstances. Show him a barren womb. Show him a closed door. Show him a, a broken dream. And get ready for one thing, for God to show up. What matters is that in the midst of droughts and fires and rains, God is right there. So if you, have, if you carry this mantle, let me prophetically decree that this generation with this Christ-centered, grace-tailored mantle, cloak, will survive the drought, pray down the fire, and thrive in the rain. This is the mantle number two of only God. Somebody say, only God. Say, only God. 1 Kings 18, 24, Elijah parenthetically lays out the case in his, in his confrontation of the false. says, only God, the true God will answer with fire, only God. It is the mantle that says, not only it survives droughts, fires, and rains, this is the mantle of only God, which means there are things that only God can do. When you carry this mantle, you'll be able to convey via the conduit of your testimony, your praise, your walk, your maturity in Christ, and what you do with those around you, you will convey a continuous, unbroken message of there are things that only God can do. Only God can make something out of nothing. Genesis chapter 1. Only God can make something sweet out of something that was dead. Judges chapter 14. Only God can make a way where there is no way. Isaiah chapter 43. Only God can show up and restore things like the damage never happened. Luke chapter 22. Remember when Peter got ahead of himself and they were around to arrest Jesus and Peter came along and he cut off an ear and then Jesus came along and restored the ear and the Bible says like the damage never happened? Only God. So let me prophesy in the name of Jesus, committed to God's word. As you carry this mantle, God will make something out of nothing. God's about to make honey out of your hell. I'm going to say that again. God will make honey out of your hell. God's making, I'm going to say that one more time. God's going to make honey out of your hell. Something sweet is coming out of the very thing you have gone through. 
and God is making a way where there is no way. And, and God placed this word for someone watching right now, someone here, someone who has recently been through hell and high water. God's about to restore your family, your relationships, your joy, your peace, your integrity, your health, and your destiny like the damage never happened. If that's for you, give God your best praise today. I'm going to say that one more time. This is for someone here. God's about to restore your family, your relationships, your joy, your peace, your integrity, your health, your destiny, your finances, your calling, like the damage never happened. <laughs> only God. Somebody say only God. Only God. Only God. You can't receive this double portion mantle until you embrace the truth that there are things that only God can do. Only God, only God. No, there's only, and, and, it's, and it's very, let's just say, incorrect or politically incorrect to decree and declare that our God is the only God who can do these things. But that mantle prompts us to be courageous with love, not in a hateful manner. We're, we're not here to be whining about the darkness. We're not even called to curse the darkness. We're called to turn on the light. So it's more about turning on the light. But nevertheless, we, we are, it behooves us to be clear of our convictions, to proclaim with this mantle that there's only God. Oh, I did something silly, it seems. Wouldn't be my first time. I did something silly on Facebook this past November, right before Thanksgiving in America. And I, I posted something on Facebook. And, and, and I, like, I'm, I'm like everyone else, like the, the, the pastors that were referenced yesterday in, in our discussion, which I'm still going through therapy for what happened in the afternoon yesterday. <laughs> like, seriously speaking, like, I can never see the word Croatia again. <laughs> and, and it's sanctified. Now it's like, or it's, wow, okay, wow. It's, it's going to, really, like, I'm going to walk through the mall with my wife and say crazy things. I'll pass by Victoria's Secret. I'll go, Chris Pringle. And she'll go, what? And, and I go, I have to explain, but that's not, that's not, the, that's, that's not the point. So I, in, this past November on Facebook, I did something silly on my public page. So wrong. It was so bigoted and intolerant and archaic and, and just narrow-minded and inappropriate. How dare I do that? How dare I be so incorrect and so insensitive? Right before Thanksgiving, I posted something so wrong. I, I posted... Only Jesus is the way. Whoa, I can't. That's just so wrong. I kid you not. Like I would have posted that five years ago. No worries. No problems. This past November, I posted this. And the feedback, not all of it, but a significant portion of the feedback was, you're so intolerant. It is, it is that narrow-minded way of thinking that, that has created the chaos around the world it is, it is your crazy worldview of your Jesus thing obsession that has resulted in like the religious wars and blah, blah. I had, I, I'm not making this up. Uh, he can bear witness, my wife can bear witness. I got little death threat emojis with bombs. I didn't know they existed. Little emojis with bombs that if you would click, the whole thing would blow up. It was interesting. It was funny at first. But it, it was like all these things, death threats, we're going to come after you and your family because your kind of voices are the voices destroying the world. It, you know, your God is not the only. So it's, it's but, but I remember that God placed a mantle on me. So I looked at my wife and she went, what are you going to do? And I'm going to go, what am I going to do? Change the message and somehow, somehow surrender to Baal and Jezebel and Ahab? We're going to reach them with truth and love, but it doesn't mean we're going to surrender truth. So, so... Cameraman, where are you? Are you there? Can you get a close-up of the face here? Real, can you do a tight shot? Like, as tight as you possibly can? Uh, right there. Beautiful. Yep. Are we, are we streaming? Cool. Just in case I stuttered. With this mantle, we're here to declare. There are not five ways to heaven. There are not four ways to heaven. There are not three ways to heaven. There are not two ways to heaven. With all the love in the world, because we love you, we want to let you know there's only one way to be saved. 
one way to be delivered, one way to be healed, one way to be baptized, one way to have eternal life, one way to be freed from the condemnation of sin, death, and hell. And that way has a name. His name is Jesus Christ of Nazareth. And there is no other way but Jesus. If you believe it, shout unto God. Somebody shout, only God. Only God. High five your neighbor, tell him, only God. High five your other neighbor, tell him, only God. High five the neighbor behind you, say, only God. Solo Dios, only God. Only God. Jesus is the answer for the world. There is no other answer. But Jesus, the Messiah, the conqueror, the Son of Man, and the Son of God, the way, the truth, and the life, the resurrection, and the life. La vida verdadera, el buen pastor, la puerta estrecha, la fuente inagotable, el pan de vida. Solamente Cristo. Solamente Cristo. Solamente Cristo. We have a mantle that gives us the authority to say, Holy God. Oh, I gotta, I gotta hurry, I gotta hurry. This is, this is the mantle not only of drought, fire, and rain and the mantle of only God, but it is the mantle of when heaven starts it, hell cannot stop it. What is that reference, Pastor Samuel? Let me give you the story. So he comes down and the rain is coming and right after the fire and the rain, drought, fire, and rain, 1 Kings 18. 1 Kings 19, 2. Ahab, this gossiping king, in, in California, we would say, that boy was whoop because his wife had him completely just wrapped around her finger. He, yeah. So he came along and he talks to Jezebel and he says, hey, honey, honey, remember your, your, your team of prophets? Yeah, you're going to need a new team. What do you mean you're going to need? I'm like, yeah, well, there was this incident where we did, I mean, we slashed, we danced, the Macarena, the running man, the nay nay. We did all of that. And, and like that prophet's God, Fuego, Fuego, barbecue all over the place. And then the prophets and like their life insurance policies kicked in. You need a new team. I need a new team. Yeah, they're all dead. So Jezebel says this, I kid you not, I'm not making this up. She, she says this, this part is just verbatim. I, 1 Kings 19, 2, I swear by my God that by this time tomorrow, Hebrew exegetical extrapolation, which means in 24 hours, I swear by my God, I swear by my God in 24 hours, Elijah will be dead. He will die. Elijah carried what? He passed that mantle over to Elijah, but he carried what? Uh-huh. So here it comes. I should, you have to juxtapose that verse with 2 Kings 2.11 that talks about Elijah being taken up to heaven in a whirlwind. You have to put 1 Kings 19.2 right next to 2 Kings 2.11. Because here's the story. 24 hours came, passed by. Elijah did not die. Jezebel said, he's going to die. Elijah, hell said, he's going to die. The powers of darkness said, he's going to die. 24 hours came, Elijah did not die. 48 hours passed, Elijah did not die. Do your biblical due diligence. 72 hours passed, Elijah did not die. 96 hours passed, Elijah did not die. In full disclosure, one week passed, Elijah did not die. One month passed, Elijah did not die. One year passed, Elijah did not die. What? One decade passed, and Elijah did not die. One century passed, Elijah did not die. One millennium passed, Elijah did not die. In full disclosure, 2,800 years have passed, Elijah has yet to die. He never died. He was taken up. It doesn't matter what hell says about 
your destiny when heaven starts it hell cannot stop it when heaven starts it hell cannot stop it when heaven starts it hell cannot stop it man raise your hands if heaven has started a work in your life and you believe that what heaven has started hell will not be able to stop raise your right hand really high if i feel such an anointing i feel god's presence if, if if you believe that heaven has already started a work in your life and in your family and in your children and your children's children in your children's children's children in your city in your nation in your destiny in your health in your faith in your finances if you believe heaven has already started a work and hell will not be able to stop it raise both hands if you believe, my God, I feel such God's glorious presence. Oh, man. If you believe this mantle, and again, it is the God's deposit through His Spirit, not a piece of cloth, but God's purpose, passion, and promise through the vicarious atoning work of Christ in your life. If you believe that what's on you is so great, the grace of Jesus, the love of Jesus, the power of Jesus, the promises of Jesus, the destiny of Jesus for your life. If you believe that what God has started there's not a power in hell a man or woman on earth that will be able to hold back the fulfillment of God's promises in your life open up your mouth and give God the best praise you've given him somebody give Jesus praise stand with me you are standing stand with me Stand with me. Repeat after me. When heaven starts it, hell cannot stop it. One more time. Say, when heaven starts it, hell cannot stop it. I, before, but right there as you stand, look at your neighbor. Tell him, I have a mantle that says, when heaven starts it, hell cannot stop it. Tell him, to tell your neighbor, neighbor, this will seem awkward. But it's the truth. There, God's destiny in my life. God's purpose in my life. God's promise for my life. Will not be stopped. Tell him, will not be stopped. No, you need to say that right in the face of whatever you're facing right now. Say, it will not be stopped. Tell him, I don't care what Jezebel says. I don't care what hell says. I don't care what my flesh says. I don't care what my circumstances say. I will not be stopped. I will not be stopped. I... I'm a Baptocostal, so we have to do everything through the book. One more time with your right hand. And look at someone tell them and here's the proof if the sea could not stop Moses if wars couldn't stop Joshua if a giant could not stop David if a lion could not stop Daniel if Jezebel could not stop Elijah and if death itself could not stop Jesus then nothing on earth or in hell will be able to stop me from seeing everything that God has promised me and my family. When heaven starts it, hell cannot stop it. You're standing with me. Whatever the enemy says, it's not just a lie. It's also the opposite of what is true. What does that mean? You're going to die, Elijah. Elijah never die it's the opposite that will come to pass so when he says you're defeated it's because you're more than a conqueror when the enemy says it's over it's because you're about to get started like you've never been started before when the devil says you will die it's because you will live what God's about to do in your life will once again prove that the devil is a liar indeed so it doesn't matter what you're fighting right now, how big your Jezebel or your Ahab, you need to praise like the devil has been defeated. Shout like nothing can stand in your way. 
Jump like the devil is underneath your feet. Dance like nothing can take away your joy. Somebody shout, I have a mantle, and I'm not afraid to use it. We're done. Right there, standing. We're done. <sighs> Don't forget, this is the mantle. Ah, Señor, ayúdalo, Padre. This is the mantle. This is the mantle of let it go. The, no makeup. There's nothing made up here. No hyperbole. No prophetic exuberance. The moment the mantle descended, he let go of the plow. When heaven falls upon you, you have to let go of things down here. There are things you have to let go of. You cannot embrace what God has for you until you first embrace what God did for you. I'll say that one more time. You cannot embrace what God has for you until you first embrace what God did for you. What you let go of down here will determine what God releases upon you from up there. There's a season to hold on and be still. There is likewise a season to let go and move forward. And Christ-centered, Bible-based, spirit-empowered, double-portioned, mantle-carrying people can tell the difference. There are things that we are called to let go. There may be relationships outside the confines of marriage of people that have been hooked. And it's not that you don't love them. Just put them in God's hands. But you need to surround yourself with people that speak into you and not about you. With those that celebrate your future rather than resurrect your past. There are things you have to let go. Ephesians 4.31. Get, let go of all bitterness, rage, anger, harsh words, slander, evil behavior. Instead, be kind to one another. Forgive you, one another just as God through Christ has forgiven you. There are things you have to let, let go of comfortable Christianity. Let go of unforgiveness and even of the lack of forgiving yourself. Let go of the shame and the guilt. Let go of religious constructs and paradigms that prompt us to suffer from myopia and the way we look at the world around us. Let go. Look at your neighbor, tell him, let go. Your other neighbor, the one with the attitude, tell him, let go. And, and I'm done now, I'm done now, I'm done now. Final thing, final thing. This is what he did. But, Number five, last point, don't move. First Kings 18, 46. It is the mantle of tuck it in. I kid you not. In First Kings 18, 46, when Elijah gave the instructions, hey Ahab, I need you to go pick up your Maserati. Take off, buddy. Because there's mighty rain coming. And then he ended up outspeeding the chariot, right? Elijah, the Bible says, he took the mantle and he tucked it in. He put it in right ear between his belt. Now the mantle actually went down just like this one. It went down to his feet. So there's a practical way. We don't have to get prophetic about it. Why did he tuck it in if he's about to run? So he would have won. That's it. His trip. It's all about tripping. So don't get too spiritual about it. The reason he did it was not to what? Unfortunately, we have seen too many beautiful people trip over their mantle. Lovely people who are worthy of being restored. Indeed, we do a terrible job of our wounded, by the way. We, we, we're like the worst tribe in restoring those that have fallen. We need to be more compassionate, grace-filled, and I know it requires legitimate repentance, amen. And we don't tolerate sin, I get all that, but we need to restore our fallen. And we were, this generation has to restore the fallen. But we, we've seen so many trip over their own mantle because they don't know how to manage a deposit. They don't know how to manage what God has placed upon them. We become presumptuous, we actually drink our own Kool-Aid, and that's an American thing again. And we start believing our own press clippings or we, we trust others, it's whatever it may be, but we need to learn how to tuck it in. There comes a season where you have to protect that mantle, not for you, but because there's a generation that will follow you that will need that mantle upon them. You get that part? Tell your neighbor, tuck it in, tuck it in. Transparency precedes transformation. Show me a transparent leader and I will show you transform followers. A leader who is willing to tuck in that mantle and share the struggles of that mantle with those around them. Understanding that what God blesses, no man can curse. 
What God delivers, no man can bind. And what God saves, no man can condemn. So here it is. Final declaration upon you. Raise your right hand and tell your neighbor, I have a mantle. And I'm not afraid to use it. And tell your other neighbor, I have mountain moving faith. And I'm not afraid to use it. Tell your other neighbor, I have sickness healing faith. And I'm not afraid to use it. Tell the other neighbor, I have demon binding faith. And I'm not afraid to use it. Tell the other neighbor, I have devil rebuking faith. And I'm not afraid to use it. So let me prophesy with this mantle. You, you, you will not tolerate failure. You will not surrender truth. You will not be silent. You will not listen to Ahab. You will not bow before Baal. You will not hide in caves. And you will not permit Jezebel to define your life. With this mantle, what will you do? You will change the world. God bless you. God give you. Stand up, pick up your mat and walk. The words of Jesus, John chapter 5, to the man who was paralyzed. Your days of paralysis are officially over. If you've been blessed by this program, if you've heard from heaven, if God has spoken to you, to your family, to your dream and your destiny, now I want to encourage you right now to generously sow a seed into this ministry. This ministry for the glory of God, not rhetorically, for the glory of God, we are seeing the world change. We are literally reaching millions around the world through God's transformative word, through his power, through his spirit. We're committed to the centrality of Christ, to the word of almighty God, and through a free flow of his spirit. I want you to help me change the world. I don't want to talk about changing the world. I want to really change the world. But it requires your help, your financial investment, your generous love offering. The information's on the screen. Follow me on PastorSam.com on Facebook, Reverend Samuel Rodriguez, Twitter and Instagram, Pastor Samuel Rodriguez. I want you to follow me right now, but I want you to visit our website and I want you to give right now. So a generous seed, I assure you, your life will be blessed because you and I will be the greatest blessing as we touch the world. We are not talking about changing the world. You and I, we're changing the world in Jesus' name. God bless you. God keep you. If this message is ministered to you, please consider sowing to this outreach ministry. Make your check payable to New Season, P.O. Box 246090, Sacramento, California 95824. Additionally, you may make a secure donation by visiting our website's Give page at newseasonedworship.org. If you are in the Sacramento area, we invite you to join us at New Season Christian Worship Center. Sunday worship services are held at 9 a.m. and 12 p.m. We look forward to seeing you there. Thank you for watching. Join us next time on New Season with Pastor Sam Rodriguez.